you're watching an episode of Shiftcast. You can catch the full episode on our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Let's get right into it. We've got our first take from Ethan. This is or was the most competitive RL season, RLCS season of all time. The most competitive. How would you define competitive? Because it's... I would say... I would say, if it, if it were me interpreting the question, I would say, like, most parity. Mm. But that would mean... Obviously, you... obviously, every season, players are going to be better than, this, than the season before, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you're, if you're talking about just, like, how good are the players, then obviously it's this season. But yeah, that, exactly. that can't be the question, because everyone knows that. Um, I think this is more about, yeah, like, like you said, parity. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, we've we see G2 getting to every single grand finals they can make. And KC sweeping, sweeping the first half of the season in Europe. There, there we go. So in terms of competitiveness in that kind of case, maybe not. What does, what does speak in favor of this is that we have more of the other regions getting involved yeah, at that's the right. majors, right? Yep. So that, that's a big part, of course, where more than just Europe and North America can actually compete on the world stage. Yeah. Is this the most competitive RCS season? I think we've seen more competitiveness in terms of yeah. teams just constantly beating each other. Uh, well, you, I mean, you think too, like OCE was strictly power. Mina was strictly Falcons. Yeah, yeah. So, there, there have been a couple of one-team regions as well. Uh, but then you have South America, which kind of helps helps mm -hmm. out the, the rest. But no, I, I don't think it's the most competitive RCS mm -hmm. season, no. Not for me. Okay. Hoodie. Yep. From, I think this is from Reddit actually, isn't it? It sure is. Instead of from the shift court where most of these takes are from. You can find the, the link in, the, in any description. Um, Anon141118 says, if you got to put one extra 100 boost pad anywhere on the map, where would you put it? I know, but I know the answer. <laughs> the answer is it obvious? Is where? In the middle of the ceiling. Right in the middle, above the ball yeah. that kick off. So is it is it Would it mirror? You know what I'm saying? Hmm. So can you put two boost yeah. pads? Yeah, yeah. Well, sure, sure. Because right now I'm torn, be... I'm torn either one inside of the net okay, or on the backboard above it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say inside the net, mm. which would, it would be two boost pads, but one for each team. Yeah. 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 So one in each goal. Yep. Yeah. Which is going to make they're... scoring so difficult. Yeah. Because yeah. now you can rotate straight back to net. Yeah. You don't need to I mean, swing people out to already side. rotate through the net, right? I mean, yeah, I do it constantly. Absolutely. Keeps your momentum up if you just go off the ceiling back into the field. Yeah. The, the ceiling, I think, sounds more fun, but there are yeah. not as many. There are a couple occasions where they can make use of it. Specifically, yeah, you think of like a, an air dribble where they go yeah. up there, like Alpha makes use of it, Zen makes use of it. I think that's it. the point. Like, you have enough boost on the field already. I don't feel like that we're lacking boost in competitive Rocket League. So that's why I would put it on the ceiling, because then you'd actually only get it for specific plays right. where people actually well, going for Well, that's true, because I'm, well, I'm thinking about things through the sense of, like, how do we play now, and how would it be used? But that's not, yeah. like, if you place one there, it would shift things. Players would begin to use that specific, uh, specific area more, you know? Ceiling is more fun, but I'm going to stick with my answer. I'm going to say inside yeah. the net. Okay, inside the net it is. All right, let me throw you one. Uh, take C from Ortogano. Ortogano. I'm I so sorry. Know. I know that I'm saying your name wrong. I apologize. I know they're regular in the shift Discord. I see them around, but... Uh, well, send them my condolences. Um, I butchered their name. <laughs> or, uh, let, me, uh, let me lean into my Arkansan. You ready? There we go. Ortogano. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ortogano. 
Um, all right, Flitz deserves to be on a top eight team in North America. We kicked him out. You can be honest. <laughs> on the top eight team. Um, ooh, top eight. You know, he's not far off. I think that's that's it's a very good take. I don't think so at the moment, yeah. but maybe my view will have shifted completely. Uh, shift. Ooh, I see what you did after the shift summer league. I think this is a moment for players like Flitz to prove yeah, themselves. Yeah, agreed. But I think if the, if, if the take was like twelve to fourteen, right? That is the area the where, where like just outside of top eight, like top. Mm, like around the tenth mark mm. is where I think he fits right now, mm. but that doesn't have to stay like that. That's right. Maybe I just haven't seen enough of him yet. Like we haven't out of Wonder Mike for a while. Right. Right. All right. So not yet, but maybe not soon. yet. From Colt Hoodie, mm -hmm. the twenty twenty four World Championship will not break the all-time RLCS viewership record. Correct. Ooh. And my reason for believing so is it's so far away. Mm. It's so far away. I think there is going to be, obviously, obviously all the hardcore fans, we're, t we're tuned in. Like, we're not going to miss right. them. But I think there's going to be a lot of people that are not, ju they're just not informed. You know, I had yeah. this huge rant on my stream not today. Um, I had this huge rant on my stream today about this, and there is so much... And it doesn't matter where you, you, you know, when we had trading, you had to rely on third parties. The Rocket League esports has to rely on Liquipedia. Um, training packs. How, where do you find a training pack? You have to rely on a YouTube or a, some other, like you, we rely so much on third party systems to give us information, to connect us, to do whatever. And I really am so annoyed by the fact that we make it a point to use that main menu landing page to advertise decals and bundles and sales for items and cosmetics, but we don't make use of it for the eSport, and I don't know why. I don't know why. It's a billboard, and there. listen, the, the vast majority of the player base is console. I know that we got plenty of Epic players now, but there's a lot of Xbox and PlayStation players, and a lot of times they're just not going to see the info. They're just yeah, going to miss yeah, it. Yeah. If you will blast yeah. it right in front of their face, talk about the recent RLCS champion. Show the upcoming events. I don't know why there's not an itinerary or, or, or some page there that you could look at eSports info. I think that would help. Right now, we've got our Live Now button, and that is the absolute bare minimum, in my opinion. But yeah, I, I yeah. think it's so, it's so far removed from the RLCS season that a lot of people are just not going to know what's happening. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's hard to gauge for hardcore fans like us that, yeah. have, that follow it on all these third-party yeah. uh, platforms. Because I heard from someone who has who wasn't that familiar with Shift to begin with, so hasn't been following it from our side, mm -hmm. uh, but does watch a lot of Rocket League esports. That this guy heard about Shift Summer League on TikTok. Like <laughs> Shift is not hey. active on TikTok, so someone nice. must have been talking about it, which is yeah. cool. That is cool, but it, it does mean it comes from kind of random places. So Absolutely. yeah, yeah, you, you, you're sadly probably right. Uh, all right, we've got another take here from Deej. What's up, Deej? Uh, Simas or Crispy will make a LAN from NA this season. Those are two, for anyone that doesn't know, those are two European players that are moving over for a CRL opportunity and obviously going to continue to pursue RLCS endeavors as well. Yeah, yeah they, so they've already, as far as I know, they've already locked in their... CRL opportunity, right? Yep, yep. They're going to a school that they're going to be playing Collegiate Rocket League at. Uh, I see Volleyball in, in chat on Twitch. Shout out Volleyball for the CRL gang indeed. But they're also looking for opportunities to play mm -hmm. in the RLCS in North America, but they haven't locked anything in as far as I know. Yep. This is, of course, heavily reliant on the team. Sure. But basically the question, of course, is are they the caliber of player that are going to be competing for lands or making it to to lands from NA. So in one of those four spots, if if the you know if, if the rules all stay the same, yeah, and the format doesn't change, um, I think if if that's if that's the take, you're underrating North America. 
I have higher. <laughs> wow! Everybody soak this moment in. Whoa! <laughs> I I have higher, you know, higher views, higher hopes of the North American teams at the top to say that Simmons or Crispy will make a LAN from a top four position in NA just like that. Yeah. You know, there's too much talent and there's so much upcoming talent as well, mm -hmm. right? That's something we've been talking about so much, but it, it remains true that Simmons and Crispy are going to have to compete with so many upcoming players yeah. that already have these, you know, NA experience. Simmons and Crispy have a lot of EU experience, which is not any lesser, but they're going to be thrown into the deep a little bit. So I don't expect them to just make lands like that. No. Yeah. All right. And the last take from Walker. Rocket League Twitter is horrible. Reach it, Walker. Rocket League Twitter <laughs> is garbage. Look, I know a lot of people don't like this, and I don't know why they get worked up about it, but I would not be surprised if I have 50% of the Rocket League community blocked or muted. It's just so much nonsense, dude. It's so much trash. It's so much garbage. We've got all kinds of toxic takes here and there. People very much use the fact that they can create an anonymous account where they'll never face consequences. And they will, guys, listen, that world championship where there was the issue between uh, Space Station, Reddles, Arsenal, Daniel, Arsenal's mother was receiving death threats in DMs. That is not okay. Yeah, that happens. That is insane. And, you know, that is the stuff that they're, they're, they're doing behind closed doors. But I see a bunch of trash straight on the timeline as well. So, no. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. I, I mean, miss, you're, you're I miss, talking... I miss Crimsic. Oh, yeah. I miss, I miss him, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was so good at creating with... all these reaction images as well know, that you could man, use for everything. Dog with hat gang. Those oh, days... That, that was, was terrible. That was, some, that was some pretty good Rocket League Twitter. No. Now it's just, so, it's, just, it's just a toxic... I mean, it, it was fun for, like, two weeks. But if, if I see, to see someone with a drug... Dog with hat profile picture in 2024. And yes, I'm calling you out. I mean, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take you seriously. I'm sorry. Yeah. But yeah, there's yeah, here. There's you're talking here more from that... the perspective of Rocket League Twitter as a whole, which is fair because that is kind of the take. Rocket League Twitter is horrible. But when I'm seeing that take, I'm thinking about like the, could you call them content creators? The, the, the Twitter personalities of Twitter Rocket League. Mains. The Twitter mains. Yeah. That's what they're doing. I mean, it's well, not always for me, but this, this, I wouldn't call it horrible. My personal opinion is that when when things got monetized, um, you know, people are no longer. It doesn't feel genuine. You know, people are just banger hunting, mm -hmm. and they're just want the, the, anything for the impression. And <laughs> I know they're not, you know, probably not being paid out uh, very healthily either. But I feel like uh, I feel like you know, Twitter a few years ago was much more enjoyable than Twitter is now. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and that, like uh, Unibrow Shaver in chat just uh, says as well, yeah. like as a platform, Rocket yeah. League doesn't have anything to do with that. No, it's, that's fair, that's yeah. fair. Okay. It is what I'm it sorry. is. Sorry, my take stands. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> well, that's it, right. folks. Uh, Shiftcast, episode 24 in the books. Thank you for watching this segment of the Shiftcast. Again, you can catch the full episode here on our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Thank you for watching.